Have you heard the story about the little boy who loved going to church? He loved everything about church. He loved the music, and aren't we blessed with beautiful music here that Lewis and Rick and Catherine and our wonderful choir members bring to us? What child wouldn't love being here with this great music? But at his church, he didn't just love the music, he also loved the sermons. And he loved the creeds, and he loved everything about the church, except the pastoral prayer. Because he said he loved his minister very much. His minister was a very kind man, a sweet man, but his prayers were very long. And they felt like they went on for forever before he said amen. Well, one day, this little boy's mom and dad invited the minister over to have Sunday lunch with them. And wouldn't you know it, his dad asked the minister to say the prayer of thanksgiving before the meal. And the little boy sat there and put his hand under his chin and he thought to himself, Oh man, he's going to pray for forever ever and a day, and I'm about to starve. We'll never get to eat by the time he finishes his prayer. So the little boy was amazed because the minister prayed a very succinct and to the point prayer. The minister said, Lord, bless this house and the people who live in it. And bless this food and help us to serve you. Amen. Well, the little boy couldn't believe that the preacher was already finished. And he just blurted out without any thought. Not able to help himself from saying what he was thinking. He said, man, as he looked at the preacher. You sure do get to the point when you're hungry. <laughs> well... My friends, I know that you want me to get to the point today because you're hungry. <laughs> Not hungry for food necessarily. No, no. You're hungry for Christmas. You're hungry for God. Whether you know it or not, each and every one of us has a deep hunger inside of us. A hunger to know that we are important, that we are special, that we are loved, that our life matters. We are hungry for someone to save us from our sins, for someone to save us from the things that we do that we don't mean to do and the things we left undone that we should have done, from that guilt that we feel over so many things in life. We are hungry for joy and peace and hope and love. Those things that we remember when we light the candles on this Advent wreath. Those gifts of Christmas that come to us because the Christ child was born as a babe in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. So today, I want us to focus on that gift. That gift of God's great love to us. Years ago, a man told a story about a little girl. The little girl lived near the beach, but she loved going to visit her grandfather, who lived in a town away from them. When she went over to her grandfather's house, one of the things she really enjoyed was going into his back study. For in his study, he had a bookshelf that was lined with hourglasses. You know what an hourglass is, right? It has sand on both sides. You turn it over and the sand filters down. She would go in that study and she would take each hourglass and turn them over and just watch the sand as it filtered down through those hourglasses. He was a collector of hourglasses of all shapes and sizes and the sand inside were different colors in each one. 
She marveled at each one of them. And one day she asked him, she said, Grandpa, why do you have so many hourglasses? And the grandpa said this. He said, they are to remind me that the most precious gift any one of us has is the gift of time. Hmm. The gift of time. Several weeks later, it was getting near Christmas. And the little girl said to her mom, I haven't seen Grandpa in a long time. Can we go see Grandpa? And the mother said, well, honey, we haven't seen Grandpa in a while because he's very sick. And he's in the hospital right now. And he might die. And the little girl didn't understand what it meant to be dead. And she said, Mama, what do you mean? And the mother said, well, it's kind of like Grandpa's hourglasses. Grandpa's about to run out of sand. So I tell you what, we're going to go see Grandpa today at the hospital. Why don't you go and you make him a very special Christmas gift? So the little girl immediately went to work, and she spent the rest of the morning working on this Christmas gift for her Grandpa. They got ready to go to the hospital, and she ran into the hospital room right beside her grandpa's bed, and she leaned down and gave him a big hug as he reached out his weak arms and wrapped him around her. And then she handed him a beautifully wrapped box, and she said, Grandpa, this is for you. He slowly opened up that Christmas gift that she had so lovingly put together for him. And then he smiled, a broad smile, as he looked inside the box. The box was filled with sand. My friends, life is tough and difficult for all of us at times. Difficult times come to every one of us. Some of us, it's because of aging. Some of us, it's because of illnesses. Some of it's because of broken hearts and broken relationships. And Christmas time bubbles all of those up to the surface. We become more aware of the brokenness in each one of our lives and in the lives of the people around us. But right in the middle of the book of Lamentations, precious book in our Bibles, there is a section that begins with these words. The steadfast love of God endures forever. Of his faithfulness, there is no end. The babe born in Bethlehem, my friends, reminds us of that great gift that God's steadfast love for us never ends. God's steadfast love is there for each one of us to help us through the difficult times in life so that we can celebrate that most precious gift of time that we have been given. That babe that was born in Bethlehem grew up to be a man who was rejected by all of the people around him. He suffered and he died on a cross. And God raised him from the dead. And when he left his disciples, he promised to them that he would send to them his spirit to be with them forever so that God would always be with them, walking with them through the journey of life. That promise came true on Pentecost Sunday when the Holy Spirit came to us. We celebrate these gifts at Christmas, these gifts of faith, of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love, that Emmanuel, God, is with us. It is my hope and prayer that as you enter Christmas Day tomorrow, you will take a few moments in the midst of whatever else is going on to give God thanks for this precious gift that we share and to remember that because we have received love, we are charged to go out and give love 
So let us spread love everywhere we go. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.